Hi everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I'm Peter and I'm joined with Connor. Hey guys. This is your weekly edition of TV News and there's quite a bit of it this week actually so uh, we'll just get fired into it. Do you want good news first Connor? Um, go on, why not? I'm not changing the order, so you're getting good news first. <laughs> oh, damn it. It was more of a rhetorical question. I just wanted to say... Uh, you know, I was debating. Maybe I should get the bad news so then I can be, can end on a high note. But... I was just... Fuck it. I was setting up the good news. That's all I was doing. Uh, first things first. Quick and short one sentence. Mr. Robot has been renewed for season three by USA Network. Good news was an understatement. <laughs> I don't... There's nothing to add. It's just it's been renewed. It, 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 this surprises absolutely no one, I'm sure. It doesn't surprise me. There was a slight tinge of concern, though, when I seen that season two's ratings were worse than season one's and seemed to be declining. Um, but I guess being its one Emmy-nominated show kind of just makes it bulletproof for the network because it's their critical darling that they can... It's, yeah, and I, um, I think they make quite a bit of streaming for it. Yeah, they probably do because they sell it to Amazon, I think, for every international yeah. territory and stuff so uh, no uh, Mr. Robot renewed for season 3 excellent uh, so something the highlight honest, of next summer has already been set yeah I honestly think they'll just let them go as long as they want to tell a story as long as the ratings don't drop like massively like I said it's their critical darling they need it because it gives them almost legitimacy as a network yeah well it's kind of what we said like USA Network made this what and then for the next year, it's like, oh, USA's got a new show. Well, normally we'd skip it, but they, they did made, do Mr. Robot. Yeah, they made Mr. Robot. We should try their new shows now. And so far, that's just bit as in the ass. But Every time. So, yeah, Mr. Robot's been renewed. Excellent stuff. Let's get on to all the other bits. Now, there's a lot of new shows been uh, announced, actually. That's most of the news. But before we get to that, we have one bit of casting. And that is some more for season three of The Flash. Ashley Rickards has been cast as a guest star. She is going to play a female version of The Top. Okay, then. The Top, who has been described as the Bonnie to Mirror Master's Clyde. So they're going to make The Top and Mirror Master something of a pair. That's cool. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm I mean, does it matter if the top's a man or a woman? It doesn't really. Doesn't matter. Have uh, you got the uh, the other flash casting stuff? What was the other flash casting stuff? Um, the um, Magenta has been cast. It's uh, Joey King. She was in Fargo. When did this happen? Like an hour or two ago. Oh, that'll be why I don't have it then, because I, I did the news this this afternoon. There you go. There you go. I, I happen to. Happened to catch it on my evening glance at IGN. Oh, well, there you go. That's uh, some more uh, guest stars and villains. And we're really building up the rogue uh, gallery for The Flash. And there's one thing I've not really done yet in The Flash, is to have like a full like team of like five or six rogues at once like doing something. So I'm I think hoping, we're getting it. Yeah, I'm hoping that this season, because they already confirmed that Captain Cold will at least be in episode four of the show. Oh, good stuff. So... Hopefully, we get. I feel, I feel. Look, look. We've got. We know we've got Grod coming. We got a Grod two part coming. We have Mirror Master on the top added to the cast. We already have Weather Wizard. We already have Captain Cold. We have a Trickster. We, we have, have Heat Wave. We have Heat Wave. Um, I don't see him popping up though this season on Flash. I feel like he's. I can confined. see him popping up when when Cold does. As a guest. Well, I don't know. It depends because... We, well, we can't talk spoilers for Legends, but... There's... It depends if they want to save that for Legends. I know yeah. it, anyone who's watched it will understand what we're talking about. I can, I can see them wanting to save that for Legends, I, I yeah. suppose. So, we'll just have to wait and see how that is. But, we've got a lot of rogues coming and Flash Season 3 is shaping up with a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, tidbits and people and plot strands they could be going down, so... Uh, that's good stuff. All right, so let's get to the old meaty news. And the meeting not that Mr. Robot being renewed isn't meaty, but these are all meaty and they're all new shows that have been announced to be in development. And we have synopsises and we have, uh, you know... Why are we getting announcements now? I don't know. It's weird. I don't get why we have... We have, like, six new shows announced, maybe seven. It's a weird time of year for it, isn't it? 
Especially since the TCAs have all just happened. Uh, this would be like if all the games companies announced like m- m- like half a dozen new games like a week after E3. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking. This is strange. It is a wee bit strange. Um, but hey, here we go. First up, now this one kind of came out of nowhere. Hulu is doing a Marvel show. Mm. Which I did not expect. I thought, like, I thought in terms of cable sort of stuff or streaming stuff, Marvel was kind of just tied to Netflix. I did too. And partly because Netflix is part owned by Disney. It was a very obvious relationship for them to go there. And I know they announced something for Freeform, but that's also a Disney owned. That's channel. that's a subsidiary of ABC, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it used yeah. to be ABC Family. It was. Yeah. It just they just changed the name to make it its own thing. Yeah. So that all made sense. But Hulu's making a Marvel show. They are going to be doing Marvel's Runaways. And if you don't know what Runaways is, is it's a comic that was. Uh, I think there was like more versions later, but the original was by Brian K. Vaughan, and the plot is about a team of teenagers who discover that their parents are all part of a supervillain team. So they have to like team up and well run away and possibly take down their parents. Um, I've read a few issues of it. I have not read the whole thing, uh, but it was good from what I read, and it's actually quite a unique idea for a show. Um, I'm not sure if this will be set in the universe. The news does not mention if it does. I don't think it needs to be. I think this could be very standalone if they wanted to. I would go as far as to say I don't think it should be. Oh, there you go. I think once you're playing with that, they'll they'll have limitations, more limitations on what they can and can't do. Especially when it comes to, you know, villains as a man team, you know, because then you've got to set up the idea that there's more in this universe than we've seen already. And Mm. I don't know. I feel like they'll have a bit more freedom if it's not. Yeah. So I would guess it won't be. So, but that's the uh, that's the gist of it. That's and that's coming from Hulu. Did they say when? Not not when. They've only ordered a pilot so far. Well, actually, I'll correct that. They have ordered a pilot to shoot but they have ordered scripts for a full season, but they've not greenlit the full season yet. But that's a good sign that, you know... Yeah, they're confident. And we've seen Hulu can put out some quality. They can do. 11, 22, 63 was mostly pretty good, so... Yeah. Uh, That's good. Uh, So that's Runaways coming from Hulu and Marvel. Uh, Next up, speaking of things coming out of nowhere... Rob Thomas, who of course did Veronica Mars, currently does a zombie, which we enjoy a lot. Um, he is working on a Lost Boys TV show. Of course, Lost Boys is a movie from 1987, but vampires, Kiefer Sutherland was in it, and lots of 80s teenagers that everyone remembers. What's his name? Corey Feldman. He was in it. Yeah, I can't say I've ever bothered watching it. Um, I did see it once a long time ago, and I actually wasn't that keen on it. Um Near Dark is a superior vampire film, which was out the same year. So it's shame- a fantastic film. Yeah, shameless- I'm all at it. Yeah, yeah. Sh- shameless plug for Near Dark. Go, go watch Near Dark, people. It's a good vampire movie. And then once you watch it, go to Screams After Midnight and watch <laughs> and watch the episode that we did on it. Yeah, yeah. Head over to the Mail Fuzz Movies YouTube channel because we did an episode on Near Dark. Uh, there hasn't been one for Lost Boys yet, although I feel like Tim's going to force me to do it yeah. once we uh, get close to this <laughs> happening. It would be very topical of you. It would be, wouldn't it? But this does sound interesting, So, because as much as I don't really care about the Lost Boys, and as much as I'm kind of mostly sick of vampires, like I could do with vampires disappearing for a decade, you know, and then making a resurgence. I feel like, other than foreign film, vampires for me have been kind of, you know... Do you know what we haven't had in a while? Hmm. Werewolves. I don't know, that 2010 Wolfman doesn't seem that long ago. <laughs> that was quite a while ago. That was one thing. That was, that, no, that was like Vietnam, That's that, that lingers. <laughs> that lingers in your memory. I had post-traumatic stress after that. Oh, I'm so glad film. I never saw that. Oof, oof, that was bad. <laughs> Jesus. Oof. Bit on topic, like, I've never seen the movie, and I don't particularly carry the way, but... You, you tell me Rob Thomas is making this, and I tell I'm you, down. I tell you Rob Thomas, which is, you know, encouraging and makes me... I mean, we, we would probably try it for, you know, the channel anyway and review it, but Rob what, Thomas... What was it on again? CW. Okay. Uh, CW is the network behind this, and again, that's... I think Rob Thomas is like, you know, I can be the uh, 
the sidekick to Greg Berlanti on this network. I'll be your number two man. <laughs> they gro- they're grooming him for when Berlanti wants to move on. Which is fine with me. I, I think that's a, g- a good pair to be running the network uh, for the most part. Oh, aye. But anyway, uh, so but the other thing that intrigues me about this is actually the uh, their plan. I don't know if you looked into it. Did you read? I did. Was? The, the seven season plan. Seven season plan. Each season is going to take place in a different decade. It's kind of an anthology, but with the same main characters. The idea is that the Lost Boys, which are the, the vampire sort of at the core of it, they will be consistent and they will be around every season. But all of the human characters and the antagonists and the setting will change every season. Uh, the first season will be set in 1967, so it'll be the 1960s, and they would do a new decade each season, meaning that if it does go seven seasons, because they specifically mentioned spanning seven, 70 years, it would end in the 2010s, although amusingly, by the time season seven happens, we'll actually be out of the 2010s. So yeah, no, I, was just, I, was, I was doing the maths in my head, I was going through it, I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. it'll, it'll be right. like... Assuming this starts next year, it'll be like 2022 or 2023 by the time we yeah. get season 7. I'm um, down for it. That's a solid plan. It's a nice, unique idea that gives you a reason to, to come back and jump into any season and mark it as a fresh thing. Do you know what it is? I'm actually oddly kind of optimistic about this, even though I don't like the movie that much. My only, Literally, my only concern at this point, because I like Rob Thomas, I like the idea, my only concern is CW vampires. You know? Yeah, but then you could say that, but then CW zombies are fantastic. True, but zombies typically fare better than vampires. Yeah, but they did a very different. Like, it's not typical zombies. Is they it? did like so. Connor, I'm, Rob Thomas. It, I'm sure will do fine, but it's still a concern. I'm sorry. I, I'm, uh, I'm uh, never uh, going to uh, not have okay. that fear. I, I get that. My biggest concern is is th- these kids are going to age over seven years. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, because they'll, they'll they'll make them twenty ish so that the ah, age true. doesn't doesn't look that bad. You know, it's, it's, it's not different from like Buffy. Like Angel aged for like eight years as he was doing Buffy and Angel. Yeah, that's true. And sure, you could tell if you go back to the first season of Buffy and look at the last season of Angel. Yeah, he, he's clearly aged a bit, but whatever. <laughs> you get over it. Yeah, you can live with it. Um, yeah, it'd be stupid if they started it with uh, them all being like fourteen because <laughs> by by season two it's like whoa. I thought yeah. vampires weren't being to age. Yeah, that is a concern. I'd like the cost will just age it up. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yeah, they'll, they'll just age it up. Yeah, so they're at least like 18, so that the aging doesn't affect it too much. Yeah. So, no, nah, uh, optimistic. Uh, some, some concerns, because, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's always those concerns. Like you said, it's vampires. Um, when was the last good vampire thing? That wasn't a foreign film. That, yeah, that wasn't a foreign film. Because Let the Right One In and A Girl Who Walks a Whole Home Alone at Night, both fantastic. Yeah, but I'm I'm genuinely struggling to remember the last good English dialogue. Um, definitely wasn't True Blood. Uh, definitely wasn't Twilight. Definitely, I've never seen The Vampire Diaries, but it looks very CW. <laughs> so it does, doesn't it? Um, and, and admittedly, I actually like probably more than half of CW's output now. So maybe that's a weird complaint. But you know what I mean when it, I say it that. looks very ten years ago CW. Yeah. Um, honestly, the last English speaking vampire thing I probably liked was Buffy and Angel. I, I was just thinking, was it Buffy? Maybe there was a movie. There must have been a movie. There must have been between then and now. The fact that we're having to think this hard, though. God. Jesus, vampires have not fared well recently. This is something for the comments, actually. What was the last good vampire movie? Um, and I'm expecting most people to tell me something that's crap. Because <laughs> because <laughs> people... Vampires, I find, are very uh, divisive. Like, I feel, I feel like... Because, obviously, like stuff like True Blood and Twilight has huge fan bases. Like... It, there's I like pe- parts of True Blood. People go bananas for those things, and I can't stand them. That is not what I want from vampires at all. Um, so I'm expecting people to tell me movies that aren't actually very good. Some people will say the Blade movies, I suppose, but yeah. Yeah, but they were god time like long time ago now. Uh, early two thousands, and honestly, that, that, that was as long ago as Buffy. 
Blade 1 and 2 have not aged well. Blade Trinity was never good. But I, I watched Blade 1 and 2 again, like, early last year. And I was kind of, like, cringing and, like, struggling to get through them, if I'm honest. I can't believe we can't think of any good vampire movies. Underworld is balls, before anyone tells me Underworld. Uh, again, I like the first one. Balls. But, but I wouldn't say it's a good movie. I like it, but there's a difference. Mm. Yeah, let us, know, let us know in the comments. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 Please, I'd love to know. Good English-speaking vampire movies from the last, like, ten years, you know. Yeah. There has to be... There's got to be something. There's got to be one. <laughs> I must be forgetting something. I don't know. Uh, but let's move on. We're here to talk about TV. Uh, so Lost Boys promising despite the fact that they like the movie so you know if there's yeah. one thing it can achieve out of an announcement of a lost boys tv show me going oh that actually sounds quite good despite not liking the movie is a pretty pretty positive win for them so you know yeah they, they started with a negative and then the information they gave you made it come out fairly positive that's that's definitely strong so next up we have jack ryan which amazon has greenlit for a 10 episode season and it's going to be starring John Krasinski, as in Jim from The Office. Do you love John Krasinski? As Jack Ryan. I like Didn't John... we hear about this a while ago? Yeah, there was like early development news, but this is like the official, it's happening. Yeah, I remember hearing about him as it, and, and, and we were questioning it back then as well. Yeah, because we were talking about how it should just be like The Office, but it happens to be like hacking for the CIA <laughs> or whatever. Um, yeah. I... You know, I've never actually seen a Jack Ryan movie, even though there's like five of them now. Yeah, I haven't either. And they keep rebooting with different actors, because Harrison Ford played them, and then Ben Affleck, I think, played them once, and obviously Chris Pine played them last, and uh, and I've, I've never really cared. Um, I'd be down to check the series out, though. My only problem with John Krasinski in a role like this is that Jim is such a sort of, like, goofy, fun character. Like... I can't look at him and not see the uh, the shrug at the camera look that he gives. I know the one, and I, that's, it, like, I can picture it perfectly. But I've seen it in a, a few things. He's like, you know, he puts on a bit of beard and he, he kind of scruffens up a little bit. Do you know what it is? This is going to be like a really weird complaint, right? His nose is too round for him to be a serious protagonist. And no, I know you're that, right. That sounds weird, I know. But I cannot take him in a serious role with that round nose. And that's not to say that I don't respect him or like him. Like I say, I like him a lot in the office. But, like... It's quite, it's quite a wide nose, isn't it? It's a wide round nose, and it's just... It's so jovial. Oh, you're right. You know, I've never... I've never thought of it, but you've said it. It's like, yeah, that is exactly what it is. And I don't want to discriminate. I don't want to be nosist and say that... Uh, he's taking the role away from a good pointy nose person. But... It's kind of it's kind of hard. He's got such a jovial nose. Yeah, like I said, when he when he scruffens up a bit, and carries himself a bit differently, like <laughs> he can needs, be decent. He needs a mask. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a nose Just job. Put him undercover. Put, put now give him a nose job. Yeah, that'll that'll solve the problem. <laughs> my, I don't know, I'm down for it. Go to the plastic surgeon. My nose isn't manly track. enough. <laughs> my nose isn't manly enough. Start hacking away at it, please. Okay, uh, so yeah, Jack Ryan's coming to Amazon for 10 episodes. It's based on the Tom Clancy uh, character, of course. There's not a whole lot of uh, plot here. It just says it's an hour long, and it'll focus on uh, Jack Ryan, who's an up-and-coming CIA analyst who is thrust into a dangerous field assignment for the first time. He uncovers a pattern in terrorist... Hold on, I need to scroll. <laughs> he uncovers a pattern in terrorist communication that launches him into the centre of a dangerous gambit with a new breed of terrorism that threatens destruction on a global scale. Do you know what? So a really week generic. ago, a week ago, I'd have been a lot more down on this from Amazon. Oh, but yeah, the, the new pilots this week have been like... Those, they've gone, yeah. Do you know what? Amazon may not be entirely atrocious after all. Yeah, we're, we're, we feel so far removed from that Hand of God show that we, we tried at one point and it was... Ugh. Like... <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, and also, I uh, that was all thing. Uh, Man in the High Castle ended up being really disappointing as well. Yeah. It was. It wasn't as instantly bad as Hand of God, but it was as, good. As the season went on, it was like, oh, this is just kind of mundane and it's not doing what. I That's almost to. worse though, isn't it? Because it makes you watch the entire thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was. That was a depressing. Depressing. Uh, 
binge watch that one. All right, next up uh, from a channel that we don't talk about often, Lifetime. Okay. Lifetime. They're making a go into the uh, the scripted TV world. Who's to say what the quality is like? Because I've never seen anything from Lifetime or have a feel for what their stuff is like. But this sounds kind of interesting. It's they're doing a show which will be an anthology, and by anthology I mean season anthology. More. Yeah. Uh, it's a psychological thriller called A Midsummer's Nightmare. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah, I thought, yeah, that came out weird. I thought you said you're down. I hiccuped as I said it. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of came out a bit weird. Yeah. It, it said, uh, it really sounded like you said, I'm done. Yeah, it's the hiccup yeah. kind of cut off half the word and yeah, ruined it. There you go. All right, so Connor's <laughs> down based on the uh, the tale. Uh, so it is the anthology season. The first season is going to be based on Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night's Dream. Oh, so in. But with a modern day twist. Now, I'm interested in the title here because the title is obviously named after that. But, like, if they're going to have a second season, then the second season presumably would just be something else. Just do, do other Shakespeare. But uh, it's told from the perspective of Elena, a young woman who, reluctantly drawn to a summer getaway, turned nightmare. The series introduces four young lovers who steal off into the woods in pursuit of their romantic desires, but their plans are quickly thwarted when terrifying forces in the deep woods target the stand- stranded group, using their fantasies and darkest secrets against them. Does that sound play? awesome? Yeah, the start of it did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they're just like taking the basic like yeah party and that. lovers yeah. yeah. But then they're they're doing their own like horror thriller like take on it. I'm down. Shakespeare is adaptable as fuck. As long as it's not got Shakespeare speak, I'm fine with it. I mean, I'd be down for that still personally, but no, I can't. I can't. I can't, I can't see them making that creative decision. No, especially if they're going for a present day like set, and then they're trying to make like a series. No, if it's thought. present day, like that, that is a criminal thing to do. Fucking, you know, Shakespeare speak. If you're doing it in like that time period, great choice, approve. Shakespeare speak in the modern day stuff like that fucking Romeo and Juliet film. <laughs> Fuck that! I'm not down for that. All Pick right. one. <laughs> So that's a Midsummer's Night's Nightmare. Nightmare. <laughs> oh, sorry, a Midsummer's Nightmare. Surely it doesn't say yeah. night twice. I need to scroll up again to see it. Uh, Midsummer's Nightmare. Isn't a Midsummer's it? Nightmare, yeah. It's because you're so used to the title, you still want to say. Yeah, I wanted to say Night's Dream, but yeah. yeah. A Midsummer's Nightmare. So, uh, interesting. No idea what the quality will be like, but there you go. That's something to look out for. Uh, it's finish. Next up, HBO are working on more stuff. Uh, oh. Robert Downey Jr is involved both in a producing role and in a starring role oh okay now we don't have a title per se yet but it also involves someone else who might dampen your enthusiasm just a little bit go on (laughs) Nick Pizzolatto the writer of True Detective season 1 and True Detective season 2 is also the other main name involved with this. He is the, uh, the, I guess the the writer. Yeah. I'm torn because obviously True Detective season one proved he can be very capable. I don't know if I agree with that. True Detective season one was good, but I don't think it was good because of the writing. I think it was good because of the direction and the actors. I think it was a bit of both. I think I think his writing can be good if someone knows what to do with it. Season two proved that if you give it to someone who can't isn't competent, it'll turn out shy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a bad season. Uh, but yeah, so there's not much plot details. The only thing we know is that it will be based on Robert Downey Jr.'s Perry Mason reboot, which he'd been developing as a feature film at Warner Brothers for a while, but that kind of fell through. But now it's uh, going to be a TV series at HBO. I'm I'm intrigued. I mean, again, like you said, the name, the second name, Dan Bundit, a little bit, but yeah, I'm... HBO have high standards usually for most stuff. Honestly, out of everything we've talked about, well, actually, no, I mean, Jack Ryan, I'm just kind of, you know, look warm on, like whatever, yeah, maybe good, maybe bad, I don't know, I have no excitement either way. Uh, I'm kind of like that with this, like I'm, I have no inkling one way or the other. It could be good, could be bad. 
I'm kind of indifferent until I see maybe trailers or... I'd say I'm cautiously optimistic. Hmm. Alright. Yeah. Alright. And last up in the news this week, uh, another new show's in development. And it's called Blackmail, and Aaron Paul is involved. He's going to be producing and starring in it. Um, it's... Uh, yeah, so it's blackmail. It follows a young married couple after they suffer a life-changing accident and decide to get back at the man responsible by threatening to reveal his infidelity to his fiancée. But when things turn out to be more sinister than the couple originally thought, a dark game of cat and mouse sets them on a path to becoming a power couple. I'm intrigued. I'm somewhat intrigued. Do, do, you, know what, do you know what sticks out to me about that, though? The bit at the end about uh, them becoming a power couple made me think... Je- now Jesse gets to grow into a crime lord. You say that, you say that, but I do love things with power couples. Hmm. That's assuming that he's playing the uh, the husband of the couple who are wronged. He could be the the husband that's the the bad guy. He could. He could indeed. Um, I'm inclined to think not, but he could be. You tend to want to cast yourself as the hero, don't you? Generally speaking, it's not even just that. I don't think he fits the bill of the evil douchebag who cheats on his wife. I think he feels more like the, the guy who gets probably hard done by. He just, he just not to typecast him, but you know, he's he's not Walter White, he's Jesse Pinkman. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. But then then I can say I can see him casting himself as the other one just so he can prove that he can do other stuff. True. So I'm guessing this'll likely be a show that's uh, in the next fall season. Who's this coming from again? Uh, this is NBC. This is from. Okay, it dampens me a little bit. Hmm. You know, it's not as exciting as some other places. Yeah, of course not. But especially, especially after the other stuff that I've heard from NBC this week. Yeah, they. Yeah, their track record recently has not been particularly hot. You know, ever ever since Parts and Recreation and Community left that channel, I've not really had much of a reason to care I mean about they that. had Hannibal up to like season 3 which wasn't great but mm, so nah I mean who knows though maybe this is their their next big thing now I think it's worth pointing out there that we had like 6, 7 new shows there and all of them were from different places we had Hulu CW Amazon Lifetime HBO and NBC very yeah. spread out uh, news this week so yeah, there you go. Um, no, that's 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 the news. That's, oh uh, no, we got the other, we got that NBC stuff still. What NBC stuff? Powerless. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Because this this was you know when I thought I was optimistic about NBC again, they 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 give us and they take us away. Ah, oh, this is right. Huh. <laughs> I. This yeah, this is uh, upsetting news. The showrunner. Um, from Powerless. Now this happened so early in the week that I forgot about it and didn't put it in the news, so I don't have the names in front of me. But the showrunner from Powerless departed the show from NBC, uh, citing creative differences. And as a result, the production of the rest of the season, because they've shot the pilot, they've not shot the you know any more episodes yet, the production has been delayed. And now the premiere, which was meant to be mid-season, so presumably January, maybe early February, uh, has also been delayed. So, things are not looking good, because, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if it just never happens now. And I'm I'm genuinely devastated. Because I really like that trailer, I really like the idea of the show, but... It was everything I ever wanted. But it's one of these things where now we're in trouble production, and they've only shot a pilot, they've not necessarily... It's not such a hard commitment if you've only got a pilot, yeah. is it? Yeah, they've not sunk that much money into it there where they can just cut their losses if things aren't working out because we're at the, I mean it's one of these weird things where obviously the creators had this vision for the show and NBC's disagreed with it so what do they do now do they bring in someone else to do the uh, the studio like version of it and if so does it even work anymore does it have that's the thing like the trailer that we got whose vision what we don't know do we yeah, was that? Uh, we don't know how much that was the network and how much that that was. Yeah, we, we, the, we don't the know. Showrunner. We don't know if that was cut to make it look the network wanted it to look, or if that was like a genuine representation of what the creator was 
try to put across. Because that's the thing, if that was the network vision and they just replaced the showrunner to do their line, we could still end up with exactly what we wanted. But now, I mean, the best case scenario you have for getting this in this coming season is maybe starting March. That is the best case scenario you have right now. Um, if that misses, it'll be the following season, if they even can. Because there's, a, there's even a point now when I think they have to get this started by a certain date or they lose their cast. Because the way the TV contracts work is they have to start production on the next seasons and things like that within a yeah. certain time frame or they lose the cast commitment. Yeah. So, um, I think either way, I think... I would imagine by sometime March, April, there'll be a deadline where we'll find out if it's ever happening. That said, it's not as bad as that show that lost its showrunner and they're just not replacing it. What oh, was that, that? We mentioned that earlier. That's A Man in the High Castle. Their showrunner departed uh, somewhere during season two, which they're currently working on, and they didn't replace him. They're just letting the writing team just sort of work without a leader. <laughs> just, just wing it, basically. They basically went, do you know what? Just wing it till the end of the season, and then if you get renewed, we'll find someone else. <laughs> I feel like I feel like not hiring a new showrunner is a lack of uh, like commitment. It's a lack of faith that this season two is going to do what they want. It tells me they're probably not going to renew it for season three, otherwise they'd bother getting someone in. Who's <sighs> writers just do it on the set? Like, just... the, the, on, the only possibility that I can see is that they were too far into season two to bother bringing someone in who could change the direction too much. Hmm. Like there was, there was so much set in motion, and all the overarching stuff was kind of plotted that there was no real reason to have someone there because otherwise things would start changing and you might have to go back and change things maybe but but look... things will still crop up where they have to make it like alterations and you still should have the show out there to guide that and like they should um so it's a really weird bit of uh, news that might actually be news from like a week and a half ago because we don't really cover man in the high castle anymore it was just kind of glossed over but it's yeah, pretty no, it, funny. it just popped into my head as we, as we mentioned the other showrunner stuff. It's pretty funny, because uh, there was an interview with one of the writers saying this is not how a TV show should be run, or something <laughs> to that effect, but he was clearly being critical of yeah, the writing team. Yeah, he not just, impressed. Like, no, but that's the thing, like, he can be a writer. The writers could all be very good. I mean, I mean, I don't think they are, based on season one, but they could all be very good, but without a showrunner, you're not... Like, like, you, you have to have someone who can make the decisions. That's the point of them there. I wonder if they just, like, have an acting one. Like, the writers amongst themselves just, like, pulled straws and, like... Oh, God, God I hope they acted, like, did that. Otherwise, everything's by committee, otherwise. Yeah. Like, That's okay. Worse. We're just going to decide amongst ourselves that uh, Mike here, Mike is uh, the new head writer, even though... Just like, look, you're doing good stuff. We like you. Let's have a vote. Maybe they did like their own little presidential elections. <laughs> like, right, Ma making, everyone make their pitches as to why they deserve to be head writer. Making Sally putting up posters around the office, right? <laughs> uh, Sally for head writer, Mike for head writer. Oh man, that'd be amazing. Uh, and then, do you know what the sad part is? I'd rather watch a TV show about that than season two of Man in the High Castle. Oh, I wonder if there's like minorities on the writing staff, and like they pull some like Trump tactics, and like like they'll eat the cuisine of the. Like, that ethnicity and be like, I love Hispanics. Like, well, vote me for your first black showrunner. <laughs> or Sally's like, oh, I'll be your first woman showrunner. Even yeah, no. I'm sure there's been black and women showrunners of TV no, shows. No, no, we but... mean on this show. Yeah, I don't, I don't know who the showrunner was before, frankly. Yeah, no, I have no idea if the previous showrunner was a man or a woman or whatever. But uh, yeah, now I'm just having fun with the fanfic of the inner politics of. They're the writers' team picking their own showrunner. <laughs> <laughs> it says everything about this show that we find this more enjoyment out of this situation than we did out of season one. Such lost potential. It was such a good idea. It was. Oh dear. Um, all right, that's uh, that's the news for the week, folks. Uh, hope you found some interesting things in there. Let us know what you thought of any of those news bits uh, in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that jazz. Thanks very much for watching. Keep tuned to the channel for all the reviews coming up and all the reviews we've had up, including all those Amazon pilots and a bunch of other stuff coming uh, 
uh, like Mr. Robot and Night Of, which are clearly our two biggest shows right now. So um, check those out. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time.